Hey everyone, I'm Gary, and I'm here to take you through getting started with VBox in Unreal. The first thing you're going to want to do on the Unity dashboard is create a project or simply select the project that you intend to work on. Then from there, we'll head down to the Suite section and into Multiplayer. I've already gone through the setup guide for VBox, so I won't need to do that. But if it's your first time interacting with the VBox on Unity dashboard, you'll need to go through it. But I'm going to head into the Packages and SDK section and then filter things down. I'm gonna to filter to Unreal and then to Windows since that's what I'll be demoing and then you can go ahead and download the SDK. And you can see here I've got the Windows zip. I've already unzipped it as well. And inside, two layers deep, you can see the VBox Core plugin. This right window here is a project I've already made. It's simply the third person template, very basic and I've already created the plugins folder. If you do not have the plugins folder yet for your project or if you're starting with a new project, go ahead and create a plugins folder. Once you do, head on in and you can copy and paste the VBox plugin contents over here. From this point, you're ready to crack open your project. So we can go ahead and do that. During the startup process, if this is the first time having the VBox module in your project, you'll likely be prompted to rebuild it. You can go ahead and do that now. It shouldn't take too long. Now that we've got the project open, something you could do to confirm that the plugin is being detected by your project is head to Edit, Plugins, and then Communications in the window that pops up. This is a good sign that things are looking good. All right, we'll close that out. And then the next step is to crack open the Visual Studio solution for the project. Once we've got the Visual Studio solution ready to go, we can open up the project's build.cs file and add the VBox plugin as a dependency to the project. Now that we've got the VBox plugin set up, I'm gonna take you through a surface level integration that'll show you how to quickly test VBox while providing insight into a few important concepts that will help kickstart your integration. For this integration demo, I'm going to be showing you how to do three things. The first is how to initialize the VBox SDK. The second is how to log into the VBox surface. And the third is how to join an echo channel. Although VBox also has positional and non-positional channel types, I'll be joining an echo channel so I can immediately receive feedback and know that the integration is working. Now that the stage is set, the first thing I'm going to do to kick things off is create my own class that derives from the game instance base class. So I'm going to head up to file create a new C++ class. The game instance base class doesn't show up in the default area here, so I'm gonna click on show all classes and simply search for it. Here, go ahead and select game instance. And then I'm gonna change this to simply VBox game instance. And then go ahead and create that class. We want to keep the state of VBox persistent and have access to it during various points in a game's lifecycle. This makes the Game Instance class a good home for the integration since it's effectively a persistent game manager. Now that we've got our VBox Game Instance class, I'm going to assign it to the map we're using to ensure that it's the one that gets used instead of the default. So we'll head up to Edit, Project Settings, and then under the Project Header, Maps and Modes. And down at the bottom, we can assign our game instance here. So we'll see the VBox game instance, select that, and we can close this out. And with that, we're ready to head back into the code and start fleshing out our game instance class. The first thing we're going to want to do here is add the VBox header to our game instance. So, so that the plugin's contents will become visible to it. Next, I'm gonna add a couple of overrides for virtual methods that the base class provides us. First, we have the init. And the second method is the shutdown. I'll be using the init method to spin up the VLX SDK and log in, and I'll be using the shutdown to uninitialize the SDK. I'm also gonna make a few methods to cover the three steps I outlined earlier. So we'll have the init for VBox. We'll have the login. 
and finally the join channel. This is all we need in order to get started in terms of methods, but now I'm going to add a couple of variables as well to help keep track of things. Let's go ahead and add an iClient pointer and an account ID. Our iClient pointer will be the primary touch point with the VBox SDK as it houses most of the core functionality. The logged in user ID will be used to cache the account ID we log in with and we'll reuse it when we're ready to join a channel. This wraps things up for the header file. Now we're ready to head over to the .cpp and start building that out. To kick things off here, I'm going to copy over four string macros I've made to house our VBox credentials. I'm doing it this way for simplicity, but you can cache them in a way that works best for you. The VBox credentials are provided to every application on the Unity dashboard once the setup guide is complete. You can find them in the VBox section here under Credentials. The VBox credentials are vital for every application because they're used as part of the URIs we create when sending out VBox requests. You'll use these credentials when creating certain objects such as an account ID or a channel ID and when performing operations such as logging in, which we'll see shortly. This last macro, the VBox voice key, is used to generate client-side VBox access tokens for the sake of testing. With that said, we strongly advise against client-side token generation and caching the VBox secret key in your game client code beyond testing purposes. In production, you'll want the VBox secret key stored somewhere secure, such as on a server that you use to generate tokens for your game client and not in your game client code. For an in-depth look at VBox access token vending, you can find our documentation on the Unity dashboard. Now that we've got credentials set up, let's start building out the init VBox method. In the init VBox method, we'll start by grabbing the VBox core module and caching the voice client. From there, we're ready to initialize the VBox voice client. I'm also going to log in immediately after the initialization. I'm logging in immediately after initializing for this sample, but you could tailor where you log in to your needs. As an example, if you need player information from your backend that'll be used to log into VBox, you could wait until you have that, then log in. In the login method, we'll start by setting our logged in user ID, which will be used to create the login session that we'll log into VBox with. You can see here now that this is where the VBox credentials come into play. The second parameter of what I have as player ID right now is actually meant to be a unique identifier for your player, but for testing purposes, player ID is fine. We're taking this cached account ID and associating it with the login session we create here. Next up, we're going to need to create a VBox access token. If you have a server ready to vend VBox access tokens, this hypothetically is about the place you'd want to do that, but I'm going to generate a client side token here instead. It's worth noting that the token expiration I'm using here is arbitrary and can be adjusted. The next thing I'm going to do is set up a callback that I'll want fired off when I'm officially logged in. For now, I'm just going to have the callback send a log to the console to prove that we're logged in. And finally, we'll actually log in. This begin login call is where we'll get to use the token and the callback that we created. And that about wraps things up for the login method. This is a good checkpoint to head back into the game and try things out. Before we do that, let's add the initialization and uninitialization steps for Revox to the init and shutdown overrides respectively. Now we're ready to build and see how things look in the game. Alright, the build was good. Now we can hop into the game and see if when we hit play that we see our log message about being logged in. Alright, well we can already see it here without even having to filter. So that was successful. Now that we've successfully logged in, it's time to head back and start fleshing out the join channel method. 
Here we're going to start things off by grabbing a reference to our login session, similar to what we did in the login method. Now I'll create a channel ID and a channel session. These two objects have a similar relationship that account ID and login session do, which you could probably glean from their names. Channel ID contains information about the channel we want to join, similar to how account ID contains information about the user we want to log in with. The parameters for channel ID are similar to account ID as well. You can see that we pass in a couple of VBOX credentials along with a unique identifier for the channel. Channel ID has the addition of a channel type at the end. I currently have it selected as echo, but you could change that to not positional or positional. Here, we are creating a new channel session object that will be used to join a channel based on the parameters of the channel ID provided to it. All that's left for the join channel method is to create a token and then connect to the channel. For the parameters, I've specified that I want to connect to the audio plane, not connect to the text plane, that I want this to be the active channel I'm speaking into, I've given it our channel join token, and a null callback as well. Now, I'm going to call the join channel and the callback that's triggered when we've logged in. And I'm doing this because I want to hop into the echo channel as soon as I can, specifically for this sample. In a game integration, it's unlikely that logging in and joining a channel will be so tightly coupled like this. Typically, the join channel call will come at a later time, like when a player joins a lobby or enters a match. Now let's build once more, hop back into the game, and see how we did. Build looks good. Alright, we'll hit play. And, and can I hear, can myself? I hear myself? Yes, I can. Yes, I that can. Means that means you can too. Perfect. Perfect. It worked. It worked. With that, we've hit our goal of demonstrating how to initialize, log in, and join a channel using the VBOX SDK. If you're looking for a more in-depth and complete VBOX integration, I highly encourage you to dive into our shooter game sample. You could find that on the Unity dashboard. If you're interested in adding voice or text chat to your Unreal game, make sure to check out our website in the links in the description for more information. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope this helps you get started using VBOX in Unreal.